Okay, INPI, we look at the new products every single week. You can see these on DigiKey. And yes, there's a special edition of, from the Desk of Lady, which yeah. is actually handy because I'm going to show the demo. So, uh, and maybe I'll show the Arduino code. So as well. this week's INPI. Is this from Sequence? Well, here's the thing technically, it's actually from Microchip. But it's a partnership between Microchip and Sequence, and I really like their logo, which has that like cool like. Can you cross every square in the you know dot using only three lines or four lines? So that was you know it's a puzzle that you always get in grade school. Anyways, yeah. that's a solution. Um, so this is the um, AVR IoT Cellular Mini, which is a new uh, dev board from. Um, at, uh, sorry, microchip using an Atmel AVR microcontroller, um, the AVR uh, 128. Uh, the cellular module is from Sequence and the SIM card is from TruePhone. So it's kind of like a big collaborative effort. But I'll say this is actually one of the nicest cellular dev boards um, I've seen. It was extremely easy to use and the price is really good. Um, so first up, the microcontroller that's included is the AVR 128DB64. Um, so this is an AVR. It's it's kind of like a very souped up at Mega 328, um, if you're familiar with that chip, or a really, really souped up AT Tiny. Uh, has 128K of flash, and I think it has 16K of RAM. So, you know, it's 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 kind of chunky. Um, but, you know, it's it's an AVR, so a lot of the things that you expect, like, you know, simple register access, not needing to synchronize between domains, um, all that stuff, it's, it's, it's a simplified microcontroller. Um, but it's powerful, it's got a lot of timers, it's got ABCs, it's got all sorts of cool stuff built into it. And of course, it's got a ton of flash and a ton of RAM, which will come in handy if you're trying to connect to IoT devices. Next up, uh, there is a cellular module, like I mentioned, it's from Sequence. It's an LTE module. Um, apparently, there is forthcoming MB IoT support as well. Um, so they make the module, my, you know, Microchip makes the chip, they combined forces, uh, Voltron, slash AVR IoT dev board. Um, so this cellular module is what, you know, has an AT command set. It's what you use to actually connect to the internet to send and receive data using that true phone SIM. All right, so here's what was really interesting is that this is a, you know, part of the curiosity series of boards. And does this look familiar? Does this look like some sort of dev platform that maybe like we helped popularized it is it's the feather it is feather compatible uh which is really cool because i think this is microchip's first feather or at least this is the first one i've ever heard of um it's feather compatible it's got all the pins in the right location it's a little long but that's expected because it's got the cellular module and it's not only that but it's got uh you know a stem qt slash quick port on the side so it's got uh, here's all the pinouts and you know you can see there's built-in sensors and there's you know, battery charging and monitoring and all that good stuff. There's a programming and debug uh, system using a SAMD 21E, which acts as like, like it's a like programmer slash UART to USB converter slash mass storage driver. Kind of does everything, but the the brains of the chip is in there. Oh, it's also got a crypto chip, the ATECC, sorry, AT68 ECC. I think, I can't remember the exact part number, but it's the crypto chip that you use for, if you want to connect to AWS and you want to have uh, your certificate stored uh, securely for bi-directional uh, TLS authentication. Okay, so the cool thing about Feather is, uh, and we've featured Feather boards, and I like to point out when, when people are part of an open standard as uh, this open standard that we are totally, totally cool with other people using um, is designed to make uh, breadboard friendly dev boards that have USB, that have battery charging, so they're really good for IoT. And then you can add um, microcontroller like uh, accessories like OLEDs or motor controllers or what have you on top. And you can see here, like we make, you know, 50 boards and like about a hundred feather wings. And then the community has dozens and dozens of more. So um, what's nice about using feather is that it will be very easy for people to, like if you want to add motor control, We've got a motor control feather when you can just, uh, as seen here, you can just pop on top. And the second thing that they did, which I really liked, is they added a, a quick connector. Uh, SparkFun came up with a quick standard. Um, they made a lot of quick boards. You know, when we started to get interested in plug and play, we looked at it and we're like, let's join in. 
Uh, STEM AQT um, is just a five volt compatible version of that. But you can use either. Um, and we've got you know hundreds of boards with STEM AQT. We're, we're STEM AQT flying all of our boards. All spark fun sensors are quick and you know, other companies are also making um, quick compatible stuff like Pimeroni and um, Zio and uh, uh, shoot, I can't remember, Prototyping Direct or something. Other companies are making them as well. Uh, so we're not the only ones. Again, it's an open standard. So, um, you know, the, the Feather standard is what lets you add like big things like inks or displays or motor controllers. And STEM AQT Quick is what lets you add little sensors um, and breakouts and other small devices over I2C. Both are included. Okay, so what's really neat is when you, um, you know, it, the hardware setup is really is really fast. You know, you basically disconnect, uh, you you pop the SIM card out, you plug it in, you attach the antenna, and then you uh, connect power. And what's neat is that. Um, yeah, there's this new paradigm which I'm really liking where when you plug in a dev board, it shows up as a disk drive and then it has files to let you know what to do. So, um, you know, the documentation is when you plug it in, it says click me and I'm like, okay. Um, and what's also neat is like, you know, there's pub key text, which actually I'll be honest, I actually look at, but I'm assuming that's the public key for the, the crypto chip on there. Um, but I like this exposure of um, the information, like non-secret information or documentation as a disk drive because it makes it very easy for people to get started. Um, and, you know, if you lose, like, you know, you don't want to lose some leaflet and you're like, I don't know what to do with this thing. Um, so when you go to, uh, when, you, when you click, click me, um, you go through a step-by-step -step process where first off you have to activate the SIM card. Um, that's the first thing they do because it takes a couple minutes and that's done by Truefone. Um, and what's neat is, first off, it's, it's free. Uh, for 90 days, and then you get 150 megabytes, and it works in like almost every country in the world. Um, from here, it was AT&T, so it's whatever AT&T network uh, that uses LTE. And I like that it was 90 days because I've seen some like free SIM card plans that are 30 days, and 30 days is not quite enough to maybe get your whole project off the ground. But 90 days, I thought was um, very generous. So this is, comes free with um, the SIM card that is in the kit. Um, next, uh, you know, another thing that I thought was neat is the, uh, that SAMD21, that's that interface uh, board I mentioned, um, is also like this drag and drop hex reprogrammer. So for example, they're like, hey, chances are the firmware has been updated since um, you bought this board. Click here to download the hex file. You download the hex file and then you just drag it onto um, that disk drive that appears when you plug in the board and it programs it. Again, like I'm really liking this paradigm where you don't need to like open up at Mail Studio. I love at Mail Studio. I've lived in it, but like it's great when you don't have to use it because it's it's quite a beast. Um, okay, so next up what I thought was really neat, uh, and I even sent this to our Learn Dev team because I thought it was so cool, is the documentation site that they've got is um, I believe it's like Bitbucket, you know, back end edited, but it's a very nice um, easy to navigate, well documented, lots of photos, you know, lots of, um, you know, like emojis and clips of code um, and, re and references for how to use this board, how to install the IDE, how to install all the dev packages, uh, example code. There's even a project where you like 3D print like this cube um, and you can use that with the Curiosity Nano to show how to make like, a full product prototype with it. And most important, it's got dark mode, which is, I think, key. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, no, but I like it. I think it's like, I can tell that the people who worked on this documentation site um, spent a lot of time. Um, yeah, this is very advanced. I mean, this is, uh, I think, the expectation for people doing modern development. Yeah. So, good work, Michael. No, this is very cool. Yeah. Um, there's, there's actually some cool stuff. I don't even know that I got to add... Oh, no, I did. I, there's, there's some other very nifty... I mean, it's interesting. It's like, I like the board, but then I suddenly became, like, very enamored by this documentation site. Uh, but that's okay. Anyways, on the documentation site, there's, um, you know, hardware and schematics, and, and the, you know, there's a data sheet for this product as well. Um, the other thing that I thought was just really nifty is there's this built-in live editor where you can write Arduino code, and then you can compile it, and when you click compile, it downloads the hex for you. So it's like spinning up some server in the background with Arduino CLI, um, compiling the code in the editor, and it gives you the hex, which then you can, again, drag and drop onto the disk drive. So this is like 
really interesting and like my, it's, it's a little bit like micro bit, but like I'm, I'm kind of impressed at how quick and easy um, this live editor was. So I was, you know, again, not, it's not unique to this product, but it's a very interesting thing that they have set up for this product. So you can write code without even installing um, the Arduino IDE. Um, that said, if you would like to do more advanced development, uh, you can. Um, they basically recommend using Arduino. Um, the DX core by Spence Condi, who uh, writes amazing Arduino cores that we've used, um, has a core for the DB series of ABRs. I downloaded it, installed it in Arduino, and it took a few moments. You'll also need uh, microchips, ABR IoT cellular Arduino library, uh, which you know um, you install it manually, uh, and it comes with uh, the library for interfacing with the LTE modem, as well as the onboard sensors. Um, it has a bunch of examples. You know, the first example you would start with is um, this HTTP client, which uh, you know I basically just change it so it connects to um, uh, uh, world. Sorry, it's World Time API, and I just change it to New York. And because it's Arduino, and because it's um, uh, it's because it's Arduino, and it's be and because it has a Stem IQT connector on the side. Um, I was like, well, let's take the example and like really quickly update it so that when you um, ask for the um, time and date from this world API, it'll display it on an OLED. So let's let's take a break and we can actually go and look at the thing. Oh, sorry, the demo. So this is the the demo board. Uh, I didn't solder the headers in, but it's got the feather headers, and I just have it cooked to my computer. Um, and then you know. Again, this is something I usually can't do with dev boards because usually I have to use a special IDE. I have to install this, and it's like it's not Arduino compatible. But because this was really like it's purely Arduino compatible using a core that's very well written, um, as I squared C support. So I was just like, well, you know, let's just um, lock, um, just plug and play without any soldering at all. And so you know, adding other sensors. Hold on, this OLED is confusing it. Um, adding other sensors or capability is like trivial. Like if I was able to do this in like, I'm gonna put this down. <laughs> Connectors on wire one, not wire zero. Um, but once I got that going, uh, you know, pretty much just worked. So it was, I was kind of surprised. Um, usually things don't just work, but um, it just goes to show you the power of having Arduino compatibility, Feather compatibility, and, and STEM QT. It's like, uh, so that was, this is the code that I wrote. So yeah, I just updated it and you can see at the top, I just added the SSD 1306 library, um, and then at the bottom I just had it printed out. And then um, when you connect to the COM port, um, there's this like logging output. It'll tell you that it's connected um, to cellular. It only took, takes like five, 10 seconds to connect to the cellular network. And then it can get um, data over HTTP, for example. There's also an NQTT example and an AWS example, but I, I thought it would just be easier to just do um, HTTP. I will say I couldn't quite figure out exactly how to do HTTPS. I'm sure it's supported it because I saw there's an HTTPS configuration, uh, but there's no example for HTTPS. So I would I really like it. Microchip, you should please add an example for TLS SSL. I think uh, it will be very helpful for people because most servers these days do not accept uh, connections on port 80 anymore. And available on DigiKey 96 in stock as, in stock. as the time of this printing, as they say. By printing, I mean sending photons at your eyeballs. But it's a good deal. So, like, you know, the, the price, considering that you're getting a SIM card that's good for 90 days, um, you're getting an LTE modem, you're getting the antenna, you're getting the microcontroller, you're getting, you know, the example code and the cores all set up. Um, this is kind of one of the lowest cost, you know, LTE slash NB-IoT dev boards I've seen. Um, and it's a dev kit and it's Feather compatible. So, you know, I think if you were looking for a feather with LTE support. This is a really good example of one. Uh, and plus, you get to try out, uh, I've never tried out Sequon's um, LTE module, so that could be kind of fun too. All right. That's ION MPI. ION MPI.